This video is going to be a quick discussion of symmetry and degeneracy and how we can get degenerate states because of symmetry. So symmetry means one of two things. Either the operator gives the same state, so you act it on this state, and it just gives the same state. And this would be something like rotating an S orbital, which is just a sphere. And so you can rotate it by any angle, and it will just be the same function or it gives a different state with the same energy level. So uh, we act on this on this uh, ket vector here, and we end up with this energy level on it. And this would be the same as rotating the p orbitals. And so the p orbitals do have a directionality. They uh, they are uh, they have these sort of two lobes on them like this. And so if you rotated this to some degree theta, then it's going to have a different orientation. It'll be a different function describing it, but it'll still be the same energy. And so it has that energy degeneracy from it. Uh, and so that's why the latter is known as degeneracy. And it means that the operator uh, commutes with the Hamiltonian here. So this can be shown like this. We have the Hamiltonian acting on this ket B here, this psi sub B. And the psi sub B is just this Q operator, this general Q operator acting on psi sub A. And so we just have the Hamiltonian uh, acting on the Q on psi sub A, which is just psi sub B. And since uh, the Hamiltonian and our general operator Q commute, we have that uh, if we have this this Hamiltonian acting on our our ket here, which is being acted on by Q, we can then move Q out like this, and because the energy is an eigen is an eigen state of the Hamiltonian, or it's an eigenvalue rather of the Hamiltonian, then we can make this equality here. Uh, we can sort of move the Q back in. We have the energy out here, and then we change this uh, psi sub A to the psi sub B, and so we have the energy times that cut there. So if there are two operators, so we have this Q, this general operator Q, and this Greek uppercase lambda here, and we're saying that they don't commute, so these would not be equal to zero when we do the commutator with them, but they both commute with the Hamiltonian like this, then a degeneracy is inevitable. And this is because an eigenstate of both the Hamiltonian and this general operator Q has eigenvalues E sub n and Q sub n respectively. And so we would get two equations that look like this. And so this uh, the psi sub a here is an eigenstate of, of both of those. And so we know that if we have some psi sub b which is equal to the uppercase lambda uh, psi sub a is also an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. So this psi sub b is a eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. But since psi sub b is not necessarily an eigenstate of our Q general operator, then we know that the psi sub a and psi sub b can't be the same thing. Uh, but they both have the same energy E sub n, which tells us that they are degenerate states. And so this, uh, you know, this is because, so like I said, we have our our Hamiltonian acting on our psi sub a there and our general operator Q acting on psi sub a there. But we're saying that uh, that our lambda, our uppercase lambda here, acting on psi sub a. Uh, well, we're saying that psi sub a is not a, a an eigenstate of this, and so we would not get an eigenvalue from that. And so psi sub a is not an eigenstate of our lambda, and therefore the, the size that we act our lambda on that we act our lambda on, so we have our psi sub b here, cannot be the same as our psi sub a, but we can have the psi sub b also be a, a uh, 
a an eigenstate of our Hamiltonian here, uh, but it is not an eigenstate of our Q operator up here. And so that's why we get this degeneracy, because we have the same energy associated with both the psi sub A and the psi sub B, but both of those uh, are mutually exclusive when it comes to the Q in the lambda operators. And so we have that our, our Hamiltonian here commutes with all three of the, the angular momentum operators. And so we also know that it commutes with the raising and lowering operator, which means that we have this Hamiltonian times the raising lowering operator minus the raising lowering operator times the Hamiltonian here and that will be equal to zero because the stuff here in parentheses is zero. And so we have our our Hamiltonian and angular momentum operator equal to angu uh, the angular momentum raising and lowering operator times the Hamiltonian which is equal to the energy times the raising and lowering operator acting on our wave function here. And so when we get the the eigenvalues for these raising and lowering operators, it's these things here in the under the radicals. But uh, since those are on both sides of the equation, we can cancel those out. But the thing to notice is that we also have this m plus or minus here. And so what this means in the end is that the rotational invariance shows why states only differing in the quantum number m have the same energy, making those degenerate states. And this should make sense because if we have our p orbital, so we have a p orbital like this, and we'll call that the pz orbital, if we sort of rotate it, so we do a rotation and we end up with it like this, which we can call our px orbital, the you know why should this one be a different energy than this one since all we did was rotate it in space? Uh, we shouldn't get different energies from those. It's just a different orientation. And so the pz, px, and also the py, which is supposed to be kind of coming in and out of the screen here. So the py are degenerate states of our of our n equals 2, uh, l equals 1, and then m can be equal to minus 1, 0, or positive 1. And so we have this degeneracy right here because that just tells us about the orientation of these. And so uh, it should make sense that that uh, that the m doesn't matter uh, for this because we have this degeneracy here. And that will actually kind of come up in the next video when I talk about sort of uh, general, sort of a general uh, discussion of, of the selection rules for scalar operators and vector operators. And in future videos, I'll get into the actual sort of uh, selection rules. In fact, sometime down the line, I plan on doing a playlist on uh, on spectroscopy, which is where those rules kind of become important because it has to do with the extinction coefficient and what sorts of uh, what sorts of absorptions you're going to see and things like that. But anyway, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Uh, I hope you found this quick video helpful and I will see you in the next one.